All right, so what I'm going to walk through today is I'm going to show you how to take the raw data that you can export from the Shimatsu GCMS and how you can, can work up and do some peak analysis and pull data out so you can do the quantitation in MZMind2. So open up MZMind2. The first thing you'll have to do is import data. So we'll go raw data methods, raw data import. And you'll have to select where it is. So here I've got some example data. And you'll, you'll see the two types of data that it, it got exported from our method. It'll take a minute to chew through it. So we wait, and we wait. Ding, we're done. Okay, so I want to take a look at the two types here. I'll, I'll choose a high concentration. So here's our uh, 75 parts per billion standard. So if we right click on a, a file that we imported and we say show tick, and it'll ask for parameters. So we, we've picked the raw data file. We're going to auto range the retention time. So it'll just look through the data quick and pick beginning to end. And we'll do the same thing. We'll auto range the mass, and it wants to do base peak intensity. Uh, what we're used to the, used to looking at is a tick, a total ion. And then we'll say OK, and it'll draw it out. So here is the the tick of what we're seeing. And if we, we zoom in by clicking and dragging, we can look at our peaks. And if we double click, we'll see the mass spectrum of that, that scan. Okay. The other set of data that we imported here, the event to, so this data was collected with a, a, a SIM scan mode on the Shimatsu, so it was doing a tick and also doing some selected ion monitoring. So if we pull the same one up, here you can see it's much cleaner. And we've got one two peaks. So here, this was an internal standard method. So here's our analyte and here's our internal standard. And if we double click we can see I'm gonna adjust the range because it goes from the low peak to the high which makes it really hard to to see. So there we go. So here we were monitoring this one at 334, 318, and 265. You can have as many windows really open as you want, so you can do the same thing and, and pull a scan here. Set this to the same range. And you can see our internal standard was measured at 217, 362, and 463. So we, we've got the data we want, and when we're doing quantitation, we'll actually want to look at just this event 2 model. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a sort quick. So I'm going to do raw data, filtering, uh, no, sorry, raw data, sort raw data files. I'm going to do this file name pattern. So I'll use a, a asterisk as a wild card. And I can do E V two for event two, another wild card. Okay, okay. So that puts these all together. These are the ones that I actually care about. And we'll we'll sort them more later, but we'll start off by selecting. Well, the next step we'll have to do is we want to detect masses, because we, we want to move this over to what MZ mine calls the feature list. So feature detection, mass detection. 
as selected in the main window, set filters, again, auto retention time. Uh, we're going to make a mass list name, we're going to call it masses, we'll have to go under centroids and we'll have to give it a noise level. So with, with single ion monitoring we, we don't have a whole lot of noise signal because we picked three really strong peaks. So we can even set the, the level at one and you see the peaks are now highlighted in red. You can double check that across a different file. Everybody's picked. Okay. So then we say okay and it choose. And we'll see little green check marks appear as it finishes. Because that now means under each scan, it's got a list of masses. Yay. Now we want to turn this into some single ion chromatograms so we can integrate peak areas. We already figured out which peak areas we want to use in Shimatsu. So we I've created an Excel file. And actually, it's so saved as a CSV. Wait for Excel. And it, it needs three things. It needs the, the mass to charge ratio. So here are the, the three masses for our analyte. Here are the three masses for our internal standard. The approximate retention time for each of them, and that's in minutes. And then you can name each peak. And so I've just abbreviated STG1, 2, and 3 for citagliptin, and EZE1, 2, 3 for azitamide. So now that'll let me go in here. I can go to raw data methods, and I can do feature detection now. And this is targeted feature detection. So raw data files as we picked. Don't need to change that. Feature list file, three dit dots will go and pick up that file that I just showed you. So that's named stg. underscore -e. comma. We want to ignore the first line because we put headings in there. And now we need to give it some tolerance. Um, and again, we've got really clean data, so we can just kind of pick at it. Uh, intensity tolerance 5%, noise level at 1 again. Now you, you can't set the tolerances at zero because then it won't detect. Um, so mass charge tolerance of zero, or not zero, of uh, one absolute unit or five parts per million. And we'll set our retention time tolerance at one. Actually, that's a really broad one. So we'll go 0 0.5. We'll say OK. And again, it'll chew through it. And now we've got our feature list. So if we pick one of these, you can see here it went and found a single ion chromatogram for each mass we gave it, calculated the, the center retention time, and it integrated a peak. So if we right click and show extracted ion chromatogram, there we go. We can, we can see this peak that was quantified. And our, our pink shows us this is the area that was integrated by the program for us. So we, we have that. Now we have peak areas. Uh, we're, and I'm going to sort these. So we're going to feature list sort all feature lists. And then we can do some manual reordering because it really does it in alphabetical. So zero, mine all start with. Um, so we'll, we'll sort these in order because my, my file names have the, the concentrations in them. So 0 0.01 and 0 0.1, so we need these one. So I can collect, select multiple of them at one time, and I can drag and it will put them all together. And the, I am doing this because this will make our output data actually a little bit easier to interpret and and work up so 25 50 the hundreds down here before our unknowns and we'll take our 75s 
put it in there. So now everything is in order. And the next thing we'll want to do is like, there, there's a little bit of wobble and retention times. So we're going to align these. So we're going to go alignment. And we'll just do the join aligner. And we'll put in the same tolerances. And the weight, yeah, we're going to weight them the same. And we're not going to change anything else. And we'll hit OK. Uh, at least one, uh, we need all the feature lists. Right. So what that did is that aligned them all. So it said, hey, within these windows, are these the same? So if we open this up, you can see this guy right here, this is is actually, like if we point, we can see the data file involved. And that's one of our low standards, and we're really pushing the limit of detection on this method, so I'm not surprised it said this isn't the same. You can see its retention time is 8.9, when the rest of them are sitting around 9.3. And then I'm going to pull up. I, this one because I know that it's the one I wanted to quantify off so if I do and see all of them together show feature list yeah. if, I, if I pick one of the peaks I can see all of them lined up on top of each other very nice. Yes, we picked all the same peaks. We've got all the areas. Now we want to get this out so we can actually use it. So we're going to click on our aligned feature list. Not too many times or it tries to change the name. We're going to go to feature list methods, export, export to CSV file. You've got to make the file first in Excel, but it can be just an empty CSV file. So I'm going to go to desktop, my same folder, and I've got an out.csv ready. And then you need to select. If you select all, it's going to be a whole lot of stuff. So we're going to export the row ID, the row MZ, and the row retention time. And then for each peak, uh, each peak we actually really just need the peak area. And you can see you can get a whole lot more data out if you want to to compare and filter rows and then we're going to say OK. That exports it. And if we look at out, and we wait for Excel again because Excel is going to take its time. There we go. We can see here are the rows in the table and the MZ ratio and the retention time average. And then for each peak, here is the area under the curve. And then we can work them up and make everything look pretty. And eventually, if Excel will catch up, you can, that's the wrong one. can wait for Excel one more time. There we go. And you, you can eventually plot it and do all of your data work up in Excel then.